Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa's Back for Art. I love showing art from my heart and teaching you how to create a little joy in your life through some fun, simple, and quick art projects. How is everyone? So I painted this, got a little scuff on it. I painted this in 2020 and I love it. It's been one of my favorites. So now I'm gonna do something a little different. I have four of these boards here. I have um, photocopied out two of the um, vases, jars, that I liked the best and sized them accordingly to go onto my boards here. And I'm going to flip you guys around. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm actually, I'm getting inspired by that, but I'm doing this a little different. So I'm going to come down here. This one's going to have to be, well, which I'll do those. So this one could be here. There, I know. So instead of using tracing paper, the graphite paper, like I usually do and have a tracer, I cut this out and I'm going to lightly trace around it. This way, could I draw this? Yes, absolutely, I could draw this. But this way, I'm gonna put this on two and this on two and they will be exactly the same because I use the same piece and I lined them up the same right in the middle right down here on the table and it makes my life a little bit easier could I have just kept the whole big piece of paper and traced it on sure but then you know that's more paper these I photocopied onto one piece and then cut it out I don't want to go too dark because I don't want to be able to see my pencil lines after. So that's one, <clears throat> one set. And then I'm going to, well, you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. <clears throat> but I'm going to do something fun. So. So I have out some yellow ochre. I'm gonna add a bit of um, white to it because I wanna lighten it up. You could use ivory, you can use tan, you can use, um, I think there's an almondine with deco art, whatever you want. I'm gonna use this larger brush to start with. I may not continue with the larger brush, but I am gonna use it to start with. And I'm also gonna put out some fawn. Okay, I'm going to load my brush actually with the white because I want my jars to be on the lighter side. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this yellow ochre. <clears throat> I'm going to do mostly white. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start base coating in my jar. Mm. I'm going to make sure my lines are nice. And I want all my strokes to go the same way. So I have it to fill in in the corners. Okay. If it's a little tight, okay. But when it comes down to it, I want all my lines on this jar to be vertical. <clears throat> there we go. And I don't want to over mix. So I have a nice let me get in my cracks there because this is wood. I have a nice mix of the white and the yellow. You can see some variation. And I'm just going to pick up some of this fawn on one corner and come in and add some shading. I'm going to go around the bottom. And then I'm going to come around the other side. Just have the fawn on the corner. to add some shading to the edges of my jar, <clears throat> okay?
This is a little bit of an advanced technique. I'm using what's called folk art floating medium. I'm going to um, load my brush with it. This is a clear gel. If you don't have floating medium, if you don't want to use floating medium, if this is too advanced for you, use a smaller brush and do what I'm going to do, but only with the brown paint and close to the jars. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to swipe up some brown and get it on the edge of my brush. And now I'm going to come in here and I want to add some shading onto the table with the dark brown. And if you can see, I'm only doing the shading right under the jar. Oop. So I'm putting the brown paint right next to the jar. The floating medium is what helps your brush move without making too much of the dark streak of brown. If you want to just come under here with a smaller brush and add some shading underneath and to the sides of your jars, you can. And the, then the, the shading on the side, I'm just pulling it out to one side, not both sides, <clears throat> which I forgot to do on this side. And in this case, it's going to be on, I'm going to go do it off to the, did I do that wrong? Let's see. Off to the right side of all of them. <clears throat> Because it's clear and I can't really see the brown paint on my brown brush, I keep having to swipe it onto my plate to see what side of the brush my paint has on it. Okay. And then again, a little bit of shading out to this side. And then last but not least, Okay. <laughs> Alright, so these two are the same and those two are the same. I don't want to get mixed up with my words. Okay? So now I'm going to wash this brush. And I want to switch these. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Oh, I need some... Laguna, no. I want some kind of teal. Teal, teal, tealish color. What do I have up here? Aqua. This will work. Or will it? Yeah, for what I need. That's plenty, 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 plenty. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to get my liner brush. I'm going to load my brush. When I use my liner brush, I like to twirl it between my thumb and forefinger so I get a nice edge on it. And then I'm going to put in a few stems. So we're going to put in one, two, and then three. <clears throat> Mm 
and let those dry. I'm going to pick up some brown again on my liner brush. And paint in some stems on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then let's see, um, I'll put one way up there, seven. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I did that because I wanted to wait for those to dry. And I'm going to get out some red. And a smaller brush. I'm not going to use the big brush I used to do the jars. I'm going to grab a smaller brush. This is <laughs> number 10. But don't forget, as I've reminded you guys in the past, that um, brush sizes are not universal across manufacturers. So what's a number 10 in one brush is not necessarily a number 10 in another brand brush. So this one's about, about a half inch, between a quarter inch and a half inch wide. If you don't think you can paint a decent circle all by itself, grab something around you. A glass, a cup, a bottle of paint, whatever you think you need to help you get a nice circle. I mean, your circle doesn't even have to really be perfect, but it does help to grab something round if your circle is gonna really be wonky. When I do the other batch and I do hearts, I'm probably going to either um, trace them on or sketch them on first with chalk or pencil. Okay, so there's the start of those flowers for that group. <clears throat> I'm going to get some chalk. I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to start drawing in my hearts. We'll see which that one's going to go over or not go over. And then we'll put another big one up and out here. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my red and I'm just gonna start filling these in. Now, if you still have chalk on your artwork after you've painted, wait for everything to dry and then just go back and grab um, a paper towel or a rag dampen the edge of it and just wipe off the chalk marks. It comes right off. Mm -hmm. I might need a little brush for the little ones. So I'll just do the big ones for now. I love the way these colors just 
totally pop and work off each other. The light blue and the off-white bosses, even the aqua on the stems of those flowers on the other vase. So let me get a smaller brush, put that on the side for now. Get a decent amount of paint on my brush. Smaller brushes obviously do not hold as much paint, and so you have to go back for more paint more often. So I think I'm gonna try and attempt to put this one in front of that back one. But you know what, I'll go back over that line. But I'm gonna bring the stem, so it's gonna be in front of the back one, but behind the front one. Does that make sense? Time I'm going to load my brush. Want a decent amount of paint. Don't try and go back and forth, back and forth to make your um, hearts perfect. If you keep trying to go back and forth, back and forth, making your hearts perfect, you're going to end up with oversized hearts because you're gonna to wanna to try and fix one side, then you're gonna try and fix the other side, then you're gonna to wanna to fix one side, then you're gonna try and fix the other side, and you're gonna go back and forth to the point where <clears throat> your sizes have gotten really skewed. So at some point, you just have to be happy with what you have. And you know what, your hearts do not have to be perfect. I'm gonna go into my fresh white and I'm going to begin to put little comma strokes circling around, overlapping, and coming into the center. That one was pretty dry. If my red paint was a little bit more wet, I would have pink, which is what I was trying to do. So maybe we should only do one at a time. So if you're watching this and you're gonna go back and paint later, try that. Just do one circle at a time and then you'll get a little bit more pink, which I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix that anyway. Okay. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red with my white on my liner here. Mixing it in, mixing it in, and then I'm just gonna come back in here and just add in a few pink lines. The pink that I'm doing is, pro is actually mixing with the white, and so that's working. Okay, now we have a combination. All right. <clears throat> Oops. Clean off my liner brush. I'm going to go back to the aqua that we had here. And I want to add some leaves. So first thing I'm going to do is pull out here and add a couple of leaves. And I'm just doing very simple football shapes. That's it, very simple football shapes. Okay. I'm just taking my brush, I'm adding a little bit more stem, and then I'm putting a very simple leaf at the tip of my stem. Ooh. 
and you can do as many as you like. This painting is a little bit minimalistic. I tend to be a little, a little bit minimalistic, but it's totally up to you how many leaves that you want to put on yours. Okay. So my leaves are just a little bit of a smiley face and a frowny face, tapered at the ends and fatter in the middle. I don't like this lone one up here, so I think I'm gonna add another one going off the board. And then maybe, oh, this one doesn't have a leaf. Give this stem a leaf right there. Okay, and I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go back to my white, and I'm just gonna give each of my white leaves, um, each of my green, each of my green leaves, a little white highlight. So I'm just following the curve. I'm going to lighten up my stem a little bit. And there you go. Okay. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to come in here. Wait. Um. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to put my letter... on this one. Now if you're not um, good with the liner brush, if you would rather wait until your paint is completely 100% dry and do your lettering with a paint pen, that is totally up to you. I'm going to come in here and put my letter on. It's just a very simple letter. So I'm not really going to worry about messing it up. Although I could mess it up. But very simple block letter. If you want to do a fancier letter, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette and you want to cut out vinyl or you want to cut out a fancy stencil or you have a fancy stencil, totally up to you. I'm just doing this very, very simplistic. Okay. Get out a little more bread. So I have my brush completely loaded with red, and then I'm going to come over here like we did before, and I'm just side loading the edge in brown. And I'm going to come back to these hearts and I want to add a little bit of shading with the brown to one side of each of my hearts. So that's it. I'm just going to come back in here, the red paint, the brown on the edge, and just put the brown right to the one side of each of these hearts. You want to make sure you have enough red paint in your brush because you want to make sure that your brush continues to move smoothly. That one I might have gotten a little too much brown on, but I can go back in with the red and fix that. I'm just dipping the one corner right in the brown. As long as I have red paint on my brush, and just putting the brown to the outside and the same side on all these hearts. Get some red in there again. Pick up some brown too much, wipe it off.
and then last but not least sorry for all the noise it's wood it's clanging and then just by the virtue of putting this shaded one here it overlapped and set that one back Ooh. and I'm gonna get a little red and come back in here lighten up the shaded part but automatically when I added this shaded area it now it made that heart be in the back and again this one was a little too much Okay. Okay, now that we've got our flowers done, our leaves highlighted, I'm just gonna come in here. With an L. Okay, I'm gonna grab my liner brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. We don't want pink, we want red. I'm going to come back into my red paint. My red paint starting to get a little dry now because I've been painting a while. So I just dip the tip of my brush into some water. Not too much. You don't want it when you hold... You don't want too much. If you hold your brush up like this and the paint comes dripping off of it, it's way too much water. Okay? You want the paint to stay in your brush. So I just dip the tip of my brush right in there. I'm going to come in apply a little bit of pressure to my liner brush just so I have a little bit of a thicker line not a real thin line and I'm going to paint in my L okay Now we have our hearts done, we have our shading, we have our highlighting done, and I'm going to grab my chalk, and I'm going to put an O. I want my O to be a little oval. I'm trying to make all my letters the same height, so they're kind of starting where the jar bends and then going down a little bit. These went, this went to the shelf, this went to the shelf. My L's a little high, but my O is a little low, so I'll be okay with that. I'm going to pick up some red paint. My red paint was getting a little dry, so I had to go in and add a touch of water to it. But just a touch. If you hold your brush vertical and the paint drips off your brush, that is way too much water. And I'm just going to come in here and draw in my oval for my O. Don't forget, you can use a stencil for this. You can skip the letters. You can do fancy letters if you want. Totally up to you. Okay. This is B. <clears throat> so again, minimal letter, get my liner brush, pick up some nice red paint, and come in here and go right over my chalk lines and put in my letter. Or again, if you wanted to do a fancier letter, add some serifs, add some curly cues, go right ahead. It's your art. I just really like the look of these simple letters on these jars with the flowers.
Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to put my letter on this one. Now, if you're not um, good with the liner brush, if you would rather wait until your paint is completely 100% dry and do your lettering with a paint pen, that is totally up to you. I'm going to come in here and put my letter on. It's just a very simple letter. So I'm not really gonna worry about messing it up. Although I could mess it up. But very simple block letter. If you wanna do a fancier letter, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette and you wanna cut out vinyl, or you wanna cut out a fancy stencil, or you have a fancy stencil, totally up to you. I'm just doing this very, very simplistic. Okay.